So I want to roll next to uh, the uh, the most recent Tampa real estate statistics, and uh, we talk about them every month. And uh, January's just came out. They usually come out about the middle towards the end of the following month. And um, it, it was it was really interesting because what I saw in our company and in our office is exactly what we're seeing in the statistics. In that uh, January, the January that we had, January 2017, is by far the best January that um, that Tampa Bay has seen in, in a decade. Was it better than last year's January? Significantly, yeah. I mean, so last year's January was 1,700 home sales, 1,728. Uh, the January, or 1,799. The January before that was 1,728. And the January 14 was 1,595. In January 17, there were 2,138 wow. sales. Which, wow, that's a um, big in, in years past, that that's a number that you'd see. That's more of a spring-type number. Um, so I had been talking about how I felt the spring market showed up early. And these statistics definitely support that. Our... Um, so year over year, if you look at the stats, so 1,800 roughly to 2,100, you're at about a you know about a 20, almost a 20 percent increase in the number of home sales. Now our company was up, um, we almost we did almost double the number of sales this January than we did last January. So we were obviously outpacing the market. I think we're seeing the same thing in February, March. But some more important things about the statistics, um, you know, the 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 normal thing that we see in January is a um, you know a slowdown in price. <coughs> Um, you usually see a little bit of a value drop in the average sale price, um, you know, in January. Buyers maybe have a little bit more negotiating power. There's a little bit more inventory. And, and maybe the sellers that are on the market during December, which is, is what ends up being a January sale, um, are a little bit more aggressive because, I mean, think about it. If they're selling their home during the holidays, do they really want to deal with the inconvenience during the holidays? Not really. So right. they're probably pretty motivated. So each year it seems that the average sale price in January is, is significantly less than uh, December. And that was the same this year. So the average sale price was 238672 compared to 252883 in December. Now, if you compare year over year, our 238 uh, average sale price this year uh, 208 last year, 188 the year before that, 181 the year before that. So again, we, we still continue to see that incremental rise in price. And throughout the year, as we get closer to the summer, we'll see that average sale price you know tick up. Um, but 3.6 months of inventory. Um, so we got the market got a little bit more inventory in January, which it desperately needs. Yes. Uh, we need more of it. Um, but but nonetheless, um, you know, so there's a little bit more inventory out on the market than that. You know, we were hovering around. You know, two, two, seven, two, eight, in in kind of the peak markets this year. So, so getting some more inventory was certainly crucial, but uh, definitely an uptick in the market. And and again, some of the same uh, you know stats that we talk about, um, you know, every every week on the show. You know, when you climb the price chart, there's there's more homes for sale. There's a greater supply, more inventory, and more negotiating leverage. Um, what I found that was interesting, and, I, and I'm sure that there's a, an outlier here somewhere, um, but uh, one of the really intriguing stats for me was homes priced between six to six ninety nine last month had an average list to sell price ratio of one hundred and one percent. Oh wow. wow! Which means that they were selling above asking price. Now that's that's really 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 uncommon. So it, and it's an average on uh, only twenty six sales. So I'm going to guess there were a couple of properties that maybe were builder type deals that sold for a lot higher because of upgrade th th that original asking price because of either upgrades, uh, concessions, you know, you know, mm -hmm. bumping the price up. Right. But definitely a, an anomaly there in in that you know they they were selling above asking price. So what will probably happen now is everyone listening to this show that has a home that price range is going to call my office right. and expect <laughs> to have a of asking price. But I'm certain that you know when you look at averages. You know, there's always an outlier, and I would bet there's a couple of them in there that went, you know, really high above, or were intentionally priced low to drive the price way up, and it looks, you know, so sometimes that can throw statistics off a little bit. But 18 months of inventory for homes above a million dollars, 17 months for 900 and above. But then, you know, as you get from 800 and below, you get into seven, eight, nine, six, and then down in the average price points, you know, the two and three months that we talked about. So. Um, but again, that was that was a statistic that stuck out to me as a little bit different. I'm sure a little bit of research could figure out that you know there was there were probably a couple of sales that, that stuck out and made that number look different than it was. But nonetheless, a good month, uh, continuing to show you know strength in our real estate market. Uh, no slowdown, you know, apparent as of now. Uh, still continuing to see you know prices rise as well as um, you know the rise in interest rates, which I think 
we, we talked about four motivated right. some people. Absolutely. So I, I think there were some people sitting on the fence that now you know see a new administration, some new policies, and um, certainly some of the um, tax things that are on the on the you know horizon that people have, have talked about and been concerned about. Um, so we're going to talk next week on the show. We'll, we'll talk about the Sarasota statistics. Uh, we'll compare them to Tampa just to do a little comparison and contrast. Uh, normally, Sarasota's peak season is about now, whereas you know Tampa usually is, is a little bit slower. So it looks like uh, Tampa is, is kind of bucking that trend this year. So it'll be interesting to see if Sarasota is is as well if, if they're as, as busy as, as Tampa is. So uh, we'll put the we'll put all the uh, statistics up on all our social channels. So make sure to follow us facebook.com slash the Duncan Duo Show uh, or on Twitter at the Duncan Duo. Uh, we'll post this PDF up. So if you're curious or if you're a statistical person and you really like number crunching, uh, you can go through the sheet and look at all the different uh, data points and price points and, and how the market's doing and all those.